while responding, or you respond to the relative if, it, if it's necessary, right? And um, like if it's permissions needed for something, they come out and say, well, we have permission to do that. If I think it'll hurt, help Betsy, you bet it, you, you, you have it. So that's responding on a relative level. But there's also responding on an absolute level, which is on the, the fact that the recognition that there can't anything actually hurt Betsy. And the reason is, is that the only Betsy there is, is here. There's the thing that I call my wife. It's a wonderful thing, but whatever it is, it's not a Betsy. It's um, because Betsy is whatever it, whatever Betsy is, whatever that word brings to me at that moment. And there's pretty much never going to be anything but love and compassion. So there will be the, the noticing that there's a tension in the body that comes from trauma. And then there can be a noticing simultaneously that although there's tension, which can't, uh, you know, I can't make it go away. It can just, it'll happen or it won't. But I don't have to run with it. Yeah. I can notice that there's tension. I can notice that there's concern. I can notice that there, the, in a certain situations, I can notice that there's grief. So, and 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 what you're doing there is you're responding from the non-dual level, which means that you are allowing both worlds to to be seen and and to be uh, handled, if you will, or you know, or, or allowed. You're, you can both worlds can be allowed simultaneously <clears throat> it's because there really is no separation so there's no but i'm this and not that no 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 in all cases you are this and that the there's 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 no such people want to know does non do is this the way that non-duality works and it, as i mentioned earlier it's well, yes, it is. And well, no, it's not, you know, because it works like this and this. It doesn't like work like this instead of like that. Um, the 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 sheer embrace of these teachings helps inform a much healthier backdrop, which is allowing this moment to be without playing into and betsy's in there and she's in danger and god almighty if she dies what are the boys and i gonna do and i just know it's gonna you know i, I bet i should probably go home and 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 whatever I, I don't need to do anything there are times when i don't actually need to do anything that's the hardest thing to do is nothing and you you just allow and this is what we can do is we are allowing experience to take the way that it to happen the way that it does. And we want we can understand it from a relative view. We can simultaneously understand it from the uh, from the non-dual view, from, from the absolute view. That's exactly the way that the, the uh, all of life is led that way here, with you know, with rare exception, yeah. where I might be completely caught up in an absolute experience or something or completely caught up in a relative experience that that can happen too but it, as a general rule it's 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 seeing both worlds at the same time and living being willing to live from both worlds at the same time and i don't ignore or throw out relativity so that i can ex further explore and expand non-duality. How are you going to expand, you know, non-duality? You're answering the emotions that are arising in that body. And you're also coming up with a solution to, I mean, number one, does there need to be a solution? Can you just hold that grief? Right. That's fine. But it, you know, 
but it's going to get all pretty old pretty fast i'm going to suggest so having some sort of solution um a solution i used to have to great great ten unimaginable tension and fear was primal scream and i used to just i would go down the highway and i would roll down my window and i would just scream my head off for miles and uh and i really did feel better at the you know at the at the end and it's a it's an okay expression there's no you know i don't have to worry about what somebody's yeah. going to think about that or whether i have anybody's approval yeah right screaming can just happen and that's when it ceases to be personal and that's what we're looking for is the recognition of screaming's happening uh loss is happening and somehow everything's fine because that's the that's the default position here always is it just never doesn't come to that which is okay so you had your little tiff and now it's back to the truth right yeah most people come here out of suffering i would uh there are people uh, that I, I have met a couple of people who claimed they got here uh just because they wanted to to uh, they had some good intention or whatever but uh the selfish intentions work and um the intention that uh i'm suffering that is the that it, it could be referred to as the way of the cross and um that suffering is uh the most common entry we can say we can say that with absolute certainty and <clears throat> What you may find out, and this is really hard to see, it was impossible for you to see at this moment, but at least know that it is, that it is, that it does exist, which is that in my experience, there's been a great deal of suffering in this life. That really has been a great deal of physical pain, a great deal of mental pain, uh, addiction, uh, uh, this disease of this, this problem with my spine that I've had now for years and lots and lots of stuff. And the, but what I've come to find out is that suffering has always been my best friend. I couldn't see it at the time. Sometimes that's the way of best friends. We can't know how much somebody has done for us until they're uh, no, no longer there. Um, and we don't know how much uh, any kind of belief that we've held. It feels like when, when, when the myth explodes, which is everything's supposed to be all right for me. Everybody holds on to that. And it's it, it and it flies in the face of relativity itself, which is the yin yang of growing and shrinking and coming and going and uh being and non-being. What I would recommend that you do, at, well, you know, let me tell you first that I don't know what this unit should do, so I don't really don't know <laughs> what you don't know should do. <laughs> yeah. But there are things that come up mm -hmm. out of experience, and I'll, I'll, I'll share that with you. Mm -hmm. And that is your grief is probably arising out of a story that you're that you're carrying with you that you're living. And that story is common throughout the world, and it's usually at the base of uh, I would say it's at the base of all suffering. Yep. And that is uh, it ought not to be like this. I mean, I, I can't 
There, is there anything I can do about it? Well, I can't change it physically, you know, I mean, uh, in these situations like you're in. Yeah. So, but I don't have to like take it like a whipping every morning. Right. I, right. Don't, have to, I don't have to put that robe on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, or that, that hair shirt as they used to do. I guess they still do in some places. Yeah. And recognize that everything is as it must be. Mm -hmm. There's no should or shouldn't. Right. Everything is can you find an alternative to this? Uh, to life, living life as it comes? There's no alternative. You can't ignore your grief. No. But you can resolve to experience it differently. And you can do that if you're willing to tell yourself the truth. And it may, you may or may not be, and it may take some time, or you might be able to get it right away. Who knows? Mm -hmm. There's no should or shouldn't. There's this as it is. And this as it is includes everything that's ever been. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels like I can pick out what's right or wrong, but there's... But, you know who would do that and how what's the benchmark the benchmark is me being happy <laughs> and the and the myth is i should be happy all the time well the question to that would be are you <laughs> no so how how do you feel when you recognize that you can't be happy all of the time but you nonetheless believe that you should be that's the gap. Yeah. That's the gap right there. Mm -hmm. So when we get out of comparison, which is, it really ought to be like, yeah. that's imagination. It's fantasy. And there's nothing more painful than our own fantasies. Because mm -hmm. I know just how it should be. We should have never parted. It should have been like differently. I shouldn't have done what I did. And under the da, 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 da. we, the reason I'm here in front of you right now is because I can't not be. It feels like I made a choice. It feels like you made a choice. But the reason you're here in front of me is because you can't not be. Nothing else could be happening right now. This is as it is. And simply recognizing that this has to be the way it is because this is, on some level, this is the culmination of all that's been before. And there's nothing that can be redone. So there's no comparison and there's no alternative. And that's where we love to live is our little alternative universes. And we get in there and it's just, everything's just right in my little universe, except for the fact that it's none of it's true. And, uh, but, I'm, uh, but I'm trying to live like my little universe is the benchmark for the world. And uh, when you get away from the idea that the world is here to make you happy. The world is not here to make you sad, but from a non-dual perspective, there's no you there. There's just this. And it's happening exactly the way it's happening. And 
when anybody says, but it should, just ask them, is it? I should feel good all the time. Do you? No. So how does it make you feel when you don't feel good all the time, but you hold the belief that you should be, that you should? Well, that hurts. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't talk about this experience much. I talked about it once this week with somebody that I thought it would be beneficial with. Yeah. But I was, when I was 17, I was right at knife point. Oh. And uh, I have to tell you, I'm just blessed, but I don't have any bitterness toward that. I don't have any sense at all that that shouldn't have been. But what I can tell you is I was only raped once a long, long time ago. But if I held a resentment and a belief that it shouldn't have been, I'd be I'd be raping myself every day. Yeah. You get that? Yeah. Because I'm reliving that experience over and over again. And I'm trying to and I'm trying to make it fit in a in a world. I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to make it fit in a world where it uh, it just doesn't line up with the experience. Right. So if I can recognize that shit happens. Mm -hmm. Shit happens. Yeah. And don't take it personally. There yeah. was nothing personal in that. Mm -hmm. That guy didn't do that to me. He just did it. Mm -hmm. He didn't even know me. So I don't have to live with that kind of pressure. And I can take that very, very terrible, you know, in conventional terms, experience. And I can turn it into being a useful experience because I've helped a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I've had a bunch of clients who've been raped. It's really more common than we might imagine. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I can tell you that it is really different when you can talk to them from your own personal experience yeah. than it is from the hypothetical, no matter how well-meaning that may be. And okay. so it has become a very beneficial thing. My, mm -hmm. my suffering was my friend, and it still is my friend. Suffering, you know what suffering does now? It brings to my attention that I'm dreaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Because yes. mm -hmm. I'm dreaming in a world where I'm suffering because I think something, think thinks things ought not to be like they are. It always boils down to that. <clears throat> shouldn't feel like this. It shouldn't be like this. You know, I shouldn't have lost all my money. I shouldn't have lost. Mm -hmm. How about gossip? 27 people in my family shouldn't have been killed in one throw or, you know, or Israel, same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. The uh, <clears throat> That's a lot to take on in a world where it does happen. And it does happen to, quote, you. Mm -hmm. Because we're, I was always the magical exception. I, mean, I knew all this should happen to other people, but not me. I shouldn't lose my money. I shouldn't go to jail. I was a nice guy. Couldn't everybody see that? Why are they putting me in jail? I'm the one nice guy here. Yeah. I mean, I'm in jail with all these sons of bitches, all these criminals. The <clears throat> so yeah. accepting what is, allowing what if what if this, as the, the movie with Jack Nicholson said, what if this is as good as it gets in terms of the world? Yeah. Yeah. But the way that I interpret experience, that changes everything. Mm -hmm. And the way that I interpret it will always come back to where am I seeing it from? And if I'm seeing the world or my world, if you will, from the standpoint that I am Fred Davis and I stand apart and I'm an individual and and uh, 
I know how things should go and all this and that and the other. It is gonna it is gonna suck out loud every single day. It's gonna torture yeah. me. Right. I can begin to recognize. See, in non-duality, there's a saying that you know, you are not the body or the body is not you. We learn that very, very early on. And then we ignore it for the rest of our lives. That's a good pointer. I'm so glad I got that pointer. I'm going to put it in the rest with my other pointers in my collection. It's just get it. You are not the body. Whatever happens to the body counts. And your experience counts. And I feel sorry for you in regard to your experience. But I'm not gonna. But I. But I won't feel sorry as long as there's, uh, it, if there's no motivation to get off of the pity pot. And and you're and you're here, so I already know you're not that you're not agree in agreement. With, in other words, <clears throat> you're about a solution. That's why you're here. Yeah. Some people just want to grumble. Well. Yeah. And they would they they would rather be right than free. <laughs> and being right would be that wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. She ought not have done that. They ought not to have done that. Why would anybody treat me that way? I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I wasn't a nice guy. <laughs> so life is not fair. Mm and you know what I say to that? And you may say, well, no, no, that's a bitter pill. But for me, it's thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if life was fair, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So coming to see that what happened is... We can only view it now as having been inevitable. How do we know? Because it did happen. Yeah. So, and we could say that this is, this moment, this is the inevitable flowering. Mm -hmm. Now, now that we know that it's the inevitable, whose inevitable experience is it? And if it's going to be uh, Brad's, you're going to suffer if you can come to see this from the through the eyes of awakeness and you can come to see it through the eyes of awakeness many of these people do <laughs> you come to see from the position of uh, instead of the brad position the position of no position which is that's awakeness so this is but there's no one to say that it should be otherwise there's from awakeness Awakeness is just brutally honest. And we have to be equally brutally honest if we're going to be happy. And it's, we're not being honest when, we th when we're thinking this shouldn't be. Because the only question you can go to is, is it? <laughs> right? Compare your feelings with reality and see yeah. which holds up. Yeah. Yeah. You're in, in. So this alternative view of what your life should have been like the last two years and what it should be like now. That's an argument with God. And you will lose it. Yeah. Learning to be okay with not being okay. Yeah. It will serve you very, very well. <laughs>